Greetings, dear, precious, magnificent spirit soul that you are. Wow. Okay. Now, someone out there emailed me and said, please, would you talk about relationships? I, I am almost all the time. I'm speaking about relationships. Um, and what we want to do is actually just pinpoint the um, how to have life-affirming relationships. That's the topic, how to have life-affirming relationships. And <clears throat> the key, here's the key, is when you're self-satisfied, you're not looking for anyone or anything outside yourself to determine how you feel, what you do, what you know, any of that. Because you've owned yourself. You've taken yourself back from wherever you put yourself out there. And what happens in relationships is any unresolved issues that the person has, which tends to be a lot because they're thought forms, beliefs. In fact, how the mind virus spreads is through words. That's a contaminating force. And that's why you, tr you trust yourself rather than words, because words are just sounds with made of letters, and those letters for some have a numerical value, and those words gathered together with statements or concepts or hypnotic trances or curses or however you want to say that, then influence people. In fact, you only have a fight with someone because of at least three people. You, the other person, who's ever talking to you in your mind, or who's ever talking to the other person in the mind. And maybe it takes a whole lot of entities to, have a, to create you having a fight because maybe you've got a whole committee of people of, from the past, you know, family members, friends, members in a group, um, anything that you've joined or don't even join the human race because we don't need to race each other. And that's always that thing, better hurry, better win, better get in a race. Why would they call it a human race? Because we pit each other against each other. We're not a race. What we are is we're divine beings wearing a cloak, you might say, of our consciousness that, um, so that we can perceive this more, more clearly. And, and so the way you have a loving relationship is that you already have a loving relationship with your source, your partner, your beloved, your soulmate. Soulmate for me isn't someone out there. It's who you are a soul and then there's super soul. Super soul we all have in common. And when I recognize who I am in relationship, then I can recognize who you are because we're all going through the same thing at some degree because the mind is programmed through fear and guilt and for us to accomplish something, something to get somewhere that we don't have, get something we don't have, but we all actually have it all. And when we're with other people, the tendency is to take on their consciousness or change ours in order to suit them, to have us to like us. And that's the basic thing. It's a wonderful thing to be a people pleaser in the sense that you want people to be happy. Of course we do. But you don't need to be less than who you are and to not be who you are in order for them to be happy. Because, in fact, I can remember that my own mom, she loved me, but, but and, so it's a big but or an and, but it was hard for her to tolerate me in, in a lot of ways only because I'm such a free spirit in the sense of my great-grandmother, you see, was my spiritual partner. And I started, uh, so I was already studying spiritual matters even as a little child where, um, because I was under the influence of my great-grandmother. And she was just a magnificent human being. She was like what you would call a matriarch and a mother and loving and empowering to everyone. She was home, she was home. And, and being a nurse and, a, and actually a doctor where there were no nurses because she would, you know, deliver babies and sew on ears and do whatever was necessary, fix bones and that sort of thing. In her, but her 
medical supplies were things like Epsom salts or maybe uh, alcohol or vinegar or baking soda or there's a whole of uh, good foods and everything. So it wasn't uh, a whole bunch of um, pharmaceutical uh, things that were her medicine. It was actually very natural. So I learned all that from her. Well, what happens is an animal doesn't change itself in a situation. It is who it is in every situation, so therefore it knows what to do. Well, what happens with us first and why we may have trouble in relationships is because when we have a concept about ourselves and we're trying to be liked by other people, approved of, appreciated, empowered by others, you receive money from them, you receive acknowledgement, love, support, whatever that may be, and there's that always that tendency, and I, I remember the, my first day of going to school uh, in uh, like basically first grade, and I remember walking on the school ground, looking around, and I went, ooh, have to go to school. Well, better go do this now. I gotta face this at uh, this you know big place. I think I was late too that first day, whatever it was. So when we keep trying to change ourselves to fit that other person or to make them happy or for them to like us and not get rid of us, we're always in that state of confusion and always watching the other people for their reactions to make sure, or always you're looking at their email or you're looking at their Te their their phone or you're looking at what are their who who are they talking to because I remember that and it was so horrible because <clears throat> my husband um, I, my, you know, I won't go into all that but uh, was always into alcohol or you know sex and all these kind of things and and abuse a lot of a lot of abuse because it comes with all that stuff it's 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 just self hatred. When people are nasty and people are mean and people are cruel, it's affecting them. They're, see, when we're taught to hate someone, you have to hate yourself. Because when we know who we are, we're all the same and yet we're also all different. Don't ever get think, oh, we're all one. Forget it. You're already unified with everybody. Don't play the oneness trick, the oneness group, because we're not a number. We're not a zero, we're not a one, we're not a two, we're not a five, we're not a seven. I'm not an astrology sign. I mean, those things, there's value there. I'm not putting it down. But I don't need to have someone else do a reading on me because I do a reading on myself because they're always so going to dump their stuff on you. And you have to be very, very careful about who you take information from, information. And... What you find is that different types of people, like in relationship, oftentimes it's dominate and avoid domination. And for a, a relationship to be mutually um, reciprocal, to make it mutually empowering, you have to have two whole people. Because if you have two half people multiplied, they make a, a quarter of a person. You become less because you take on all of their stuff as well. And what we're really dealing with are people's minds. And very rarely do people really show up fully uh, present. And when you're that, in fact, years ago, I made a promise to myself to be with people that whenever I'm with someone, whether it's on the phone, I'm uh, uh, writing a note to them on the internet, or I'm uh, counseling or in person, meeting someone or being there, I'm right there because they deserve that. And I deserve that too, because I'm not in my mind. Then I can be there with the person. And it, it takes, it took a while, but doesn't mean it has to take you a while, but it took a while for me to get the knowledge that allowed me to actually be myself in relationship and at the same time, be sensitive to the other person as well, okay? And when that happens, it's like what I notice the the path that I like. I might call it the mystic path or the what is it? I don't I don't know what you might. There's no there are no names for any of this because we use names. Was that to empower others? Okay. 
So everyone around me always prospers. It always does because I have that kind of a consciousness. I want them to prosper in any way, in their love, in their joy, in their health, in, uh, in their uh, experiences. Like, so I have students who are you know, fabulous writers and photographers and artists and musicians and uh, uh, you know, art therapists. Uh, they're using their talents and their abilities to empower others. And what happens in relationships when we believe that we're going to get something from them? And I remember how awkward it was when I was first married, but what do you do? You know, because you kind of copy your parents and mine didn't really have what you'd call a loving, reciprocal, empowering relationship. They were working hard, they were doing what they were doing, but like for most of us, we're, we're just really dealing with our concepts and our beliefs about who we are. And we're dealing with games and people play games. I'm right, you're wrong. In my book, What You Think of Me is None of My Business. I really suggest you get that book. And you get it for children and others. In fact, I'm calling my grandchildren, who are big ladies, and um, I know they have the book, but I'm going to encourage them to read it. And, you, you know, we can't push anybody. It's not about that. But when I wrote that book, I was re realizing how much of my power I gave away to others, and I was miserable, unhappy depending on their mood and depending on what they were doing and, and not doing and projecting onto me. And everybody tends to be projecting their stuff onto each other. And yet at the same time, just because you notice something in someone doesn't mean it's in you. See, that's, that's a big lie that says, well, I can't say anything about anybody because if I notice it in them, it has to be in me. So does that mean that a teacher and a therapist, because they notice what's going on, it means that they're imbibing that, they're involved? No, but they, it's, it's easy to witness natural behavior to, and programmed hypnotic behavior. You see, it's easy. I, I got my hair in my eye. I don't know. So I'll get it out. Okay. So... <clears throat> when we're in that hypnotic trance, we're always trying to prove who's right and who's wrong. And then there's those subtle put downs that people have in front of people or not in front of people or at home, or you go to share something and go, no, that's not right, or be quiet, or they get angry, or they don't like it and all that. So we're always trying to change ourselves to fit. And then after a while, we get tired of trying to change ourselves to fit. And we say, well, they took our power. They didn't take your power. You gave it to them because you decided they're the source of your happiness and your love. And that's not true. And when people do that, they have to manipulate these people all the time to make sure that these people are going to be the way they want them to be so they can feel good. See, what you want to do is go directly to feel good. What does that mean? That means you do your work on yourself. And... If, if you're in a relationship and what you're doing is sitting there talking about your relationship all the time, you don't have one. Relationships, relationships are about activities. We're doing stuff. We're cleaning house. We're working in the yard. We're, we're learning something. We're uh, cooking dinner. We're um, working together for a project. We're working with the children or we're, you know, we're celebrating. We're dancing. We're celebrating life. And there's a belief that we can't all have what we need and want because you know scarcity is the first rule of economics this worldwide banking economics everything's scarce so you got to be scared all the time so in relationship people are, are frightened in relationships people are trying to get control and are tried to dominate or to avoid domination or to prove their rights and, and this is what misogynists do male or female what they do is they find happy, joyful, powerful people because there's no challenge to take down somebody who um, is a weakling and just can't do anything and help us. So go for the big one, you know, but little by little undermine, you know, embarrass them in public, take away, say, you know, invalidate their knowing. So you don't know anything. I know more than you. So because you get these insecure people that believe that the way that they can be empowered is to take the power from somebody else and depower them and give it to yourself so you can be empowered. That's just the same thing that people who eat animals are, are believe that you have to eat the, the body of another living entity in order to get power for you. And, and it's also an honestly, we don't need that much food. 
It needs the quality of food that is vibrant, but and you have a divine body. So you you don't in life need to take the energy and resources of someone else in order to have what you need. It's the very same thing in life. And when you become self-satisfied, you're also self-sufficient. You also um, are the master, you might say, of life because you have mastered you yourself you know that what the mind is and how it operates and how it works and we've got lots and lots of videos like that so this is just the beginning and we do more on relationship so you take a look at where you are in relationship and and how are you using relationships and what are you doing with relationships and how many families they base their relationship on guilt and 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 control and domination and embarrassment and ridicule or threats and promises and that they don't keep all of this stuff in relationship and then people play games and I noticed that someone I was going to work with but I know she's always complaining about anybody that she works with with all their faults and everything so I know I don't want to get involved with this person because I know I'm going to be one of those people because if you take a look everybody out there has got a mind and they're all going all at the same time and they're talking to them, tell them to do this and that. That's the mind. And all of them are doing this. You get a room full of people, and it isn't just a room full of people. It's all the committees that are talking to them of all the people that they've known, all the education, all the religion, all the government, all the politics, all the stuff, just working us, working us, working us. So people are staying in a confused state and, and instead of being centered where they are, they're completely kablooey out there. And then um, harassing, uh, uh, hating people, uh, t uh, trying to manipulate, let's kill them, let's get rid of them, let's run over them with the truck, you know, let's go, what? And when you do all of this sort of thing, what you do is you suffer yourself. And the key to having loving, mutually empowering relationships is that when you're already empowered yourself. And when you do that, you're also sensitive to where they are. Because you don't have to experience everything everybody's going on, going on with them to know what it's like because you know they're suffering. And it, and it comes, starts with the mind. It starts with thoughts and beliefs and all of this. And what's the common belief? I'm not good enough. I don't have enough. Others have more. They think they're better than I do. Well, yeah, the mind's going to think they're better than you and worse than you and this and that because that's what the mind does. It makes up stories. They're just stories. And then when we take those on, what are we doing? We're dealing with concepts all the time. We're trying to defeat concepts. We're trying to get them to think how we want them to think and talk how we want them to think and treat us the way we want them so we can finally feel good because nobody's ever there for me. And I want, well, who are you there for? See, that's really the key right now. Who are you there for? When you're fully right present and knowing and being who you are, and that's what all this work is about, be you to the full, obviously your relationships are empowering because you're empowering yourself in every moment. And when we're doing that, we're always endeavoring for the welfare and the well-being of others because we know who they are. But we don't change who we are. We're steadfast in our knowing, and yet we adapt to each and every situation because you'll know how and you can do anything because you are basically unlimited. Hugs, and I want you to know, love you a lot. And uh, what is a lot? Not even a lot, a much, a whole bunch. But just stay in your heart, all is well. Bring yourself right back to yourself. Do your meditation. Do your reading. Do your studying. Work with the, your teachers and your counselors and people that are going to help you. And as you do that, you become more empowered. Why? Because you didn't throw your power away hoping somebody else is going to do for you the only thing that you can do for yourself.